this is the class of elementary biology and to begin with I would like to introduce all of you to what is living world. What is living world, its diversity, the classification, the nomenclature and so on. So in the beginning our first topic for today is living world. What do we understand by living? You all might be knowing living anything which has life, anything which is related to life comes under the living world. The living world is very diverse. We have lot of variety of plants, animals, bacteria, viruses, species, all of this comes under the living world. In the terms of biology, everything which has life is known as a living organism. So the living things have certain distinct features or characteristics which are not common with non-living things. What are these properties? The first and foremost is they are all made of cells that is they are cellular in nature. They can be unicellular. Uni means one and cellular means made of cells. They may be unicellular like amoeba and paramecium you might have heard about them. They are multicellular also like all of us plants, trees etc. So they are made of cells. Cell is the first unit. Second most important point is they all can move and locomote. They can do locomotion. They can move. They have got certain organs to help them in movement. They can be false organs also like in amoeba. Amoeba has pseudopodia which helps it to move. Pseudo means false and podia means the organ of locomotion, feet. Like amoeba they have pseudopodia, others like us we have legs to move. But plants they don't move, still they are living. Now comes the third point. The plants they grow, all living things have a fixed pattern of growth and development. All of us grow, you have seen a child turns into, an infant turns into a child, then he grows up, an adult and then old age. So we have a fixed growth pattern of development. Plants, trees also have the same kind of growth pattern. Next point is all living things respire. They breathe in the presence of oxygen. Some also have anaerobic respiration. They can breathe in less or uh, zero oxygen, but still they respire. They are living. Next is all living things reproduce. Why do they reproduce? For the continuity of their race, to for the continuity of their progeny. All living things reproduce. Other important characteristic of living thing is they have almost fixed lifespan. So these are certain characteristics of living things which make them different from non-living things. All these things are called living organisms and come under living world. Now as I told you earlier living things or the living world is very diverse. We have a great variety of animals, plants and living organisms. So here comes a new term which is called biodiversity. You understand bio? Anything which has life comes under bio. Diversity is a variety. So this is biodiversity. What is biodiversity then? A whole lot of variety of living things present on this earth is known as biodiversity. There is about 1.7 to 1.8 million known or described living things. So such is the biodiversity. There is huge range, right? So why is biodiversity important? Because it maintains an ecological balance also. And what we can do to preserve this and why should we preserve this biodiversity is to prevent from extinction, to prevent some certain species, certain organisms from extinction. 
we should preserve biodiversity. Now next, when we know that there is so much range of organisms, living things, how can we study all of them? Is it possible for us to study all of them? Is it possible for us to know which is what? Here comes the need of classification. What is classification? Classification is putting together or grading certain organisms on the basis of certain fixed characteristics into one group. I can explain it to you better with some example. Like in some school or college or this university, there are say 1000 or 2000 students. It is not possible for a teacher or a principal or a dean to know all the students. So what can be done is they classify the students in the form of classes and then sections. So some student, if he or she is asked to which class do you belong, you can tell you, can, you belong to VTech first year, first semester. <coughs> so the teacher knows that yes, you belong to this particular group. So you might have understood classification is important, right? So how we can define classification is, it is the process of grouping things in two categories. On what basis? On the basis of certain similar observable characteristics. When I say observable means which, which are distinct. Such observable characters can be distinct. What are characteristics now? The feature or the quality. The feature or the quality which is common among one group can, these, these living things can be grouped together in one class or one category. Next is biological classification. Biological classification in linear time. The classification was done only on two bases. It was the animals and the plants. Carolus Linnaeus was the scientist who gave the system of classification. In the continuation of classification I, I was telling, Planty and Animalia, these were the two groups in which Linnaeus divided the classification system. Later on, many biologists worked on this and they gave the modern system of classification which has five distinct kingdoms, now it is it, uh, six also. So, this system of classification, etc., it is all studied under taxonomy. Taxonomy is a separate branch of biology. Taxonomy is a branch of biology which is related to classifying and naming living organisms. This is a separate branch of biology. This system of classification is not a single step process. It involves various steps like grouping organisms on the basis of their characters, on the basis of their adaptations, on the basis of their evolution and so on. So how to study all these organisms, how to study this biodiversity, the role of classification is understood. How can we classify an organism until and unless we know about it? How can we know about organism? First point is identification. Until unless we identify something, we are able to describe something. How can we name it or classify it? So the first thing is identification. Identification is describing an organism so that that organism can be named and then classified. So there are two things. First is identification and the second is nomenclature. Nomenclature means giving name. So what comes first? Identification comes first until unless, as I said earlier, until unless we are able to identify, describes an organism, we are not able to name and classify it. So identification is the first step and second is the nomenclature. 
Now, if we talk about biological nomenclature, there is a separate term which is known as binomial nomenclature. As you can see, these are two words. First is binomial. Bi means two. Nomial is naming. Nomenclature, you all know, to give something a specific name is nomenclature. Binomial nomenclature, as the name suggests, is made of two words. Therefore, it is called bi. Bi means two. This binomial clature system of classification was given by Carolus Linnaeus. He was the biologist who is known for giving the system of classification. He divided any name, any scientific name into two parts. First name is called generic name and second name is called in linear records, it is called specific epithet. I'll give you some examples so that you can learn it better. But before that, I would like you to know that why was this need felt for giving this binomial nomenclature? Linnaeus felt that anything specific is known by one name in a certain area or a region. It is known by some other name in some other country or region. For example, we call a pen a pen in English. In Hindi it is called something else. In some other language it is called something else. So, if we are talking about biology and scientific things, a name should be there which is universal applied, which is universally applied. For example, we have an animal, say, tiger or lion. In English, we call it tiger. And in some other language, in Europe, in uh, African countries, or in some other countries, it is known by some other name. So how do we know, how do we communicate what we are talking about? This need was felt, and a universal system to be adapted for all living organisms was evolved. This is called binomial nomenclature, right? Let's take the example of tiger only. I was talking about binomial system. The first, I said in this system, the first name suggests the genus or the generic name. Here, the genus is Panthera. The species or the specific epithet is Tigris. This is binomial nomenclature. So, technically or scientifically speaking, tiger is known by this name, Panthera tigris, throughout the world, in whatever country, in whatever region. I think it should be clear to you. I can give you some other example uh, of this uh, family only, loin. Loin has a specific name, scientific name, which is called Panthera Leo. The genus is same, the generic name is same, the specific, well, the specific epithet or the species has changed, is, it has become Leo. To write the binomial nomenclature, the names, there is a set rule, there are, or I should say there are standard rules which have to be followed universally. What are these? First is, we have, we know now is that it consists of two parts. One is the genus, one is the species. Second rule is, I have written it like Panthera tigris, but it is not complete and it is not correct until unless I underline it and that too separately. Because if it is handwritten, the binomial name, if it is handwritten, it has to be underlined separately. The both the parts should be underlined separately. And if it is typed, like in computers nowadays, it should be italicized 
then it is shown it is in Latin. All these names are in Latin language. So, this was the first rule. Second rule is whenever we write a scientific name, the generic name has to start with a capital letter. Like we can see Panthera I have written with a capital P and species name I have started with small t. This is the rule. You cannot write a species name with a capital letter. That will be wrong. If you are asked to write a biological name, scientific name in your exam, you will not get perfect marks until unless you write it with a capital letter in the beginning and a small letter for the species. These are two, three rules which have to be followed while writing a scientific name according to binomial nomenclature. Next thing which comes is after binomial nomenclature, I told you taxonomy already. I told you the definition also. Taxonomy is defined as the branch of biology which is related to classifying and naming organisms. Each category of this taxonomy represents a taxon. Each category represents a taxon. All these categories together form the taxonomic hierarchy. What is hierarchy? A step by step increasing or decreasing order process is called a hierarchy. So taxonomic hierarchy means the all the categories and the groups of different taxon together in a decreasing or an increasing order forms a taxonomic hierarchy. Taxonomy again is a multi-step process. Like you know two taxonomic categories now, two taxonomic steps of hierarchy, one is the genus and the species. If we start from bottom, species comes first, then comes the genus. Similarly, you might have heard of kingdom as I told you earlier, the kingdom planty and the kingdom animalia. All the animals are grouped together under animalia. Linnaeus gave only two kingdoms, one was plantae, one was animal, he grouped all the animals together without giving specific details of their evolution, their characteristics like virus and bacteria also. According to the very old linear system, all the virus and bacteria were also grouped under animalia. All the plants were grouped under plantae. Later on, the need was felt that the criteria should be a little more changed like bacteria. They have to be under some other group. So later on in the year 1969, there was a biologist named R.H. Whittaker who gave a five kingdom system of classification. Recently I have studied that this system again has become six system, six uh, uh, kingdom classification. They have separated uh, Monera. Monera is the first kingdom which is related to bacteria and they have separated or classified bacteria again into two that is eubacteria and archaebacteria. So either it is five kingdom classification or it is the sixth system classification.